This is lecture five, part two, uh, using computer to solve LP problems. And we're gonna start this lecture discussing the lab number five, which was assigned in, in the previous lecture. And in, in this lab, we needed to solve this problem, this single period production model which is an LP formulation for a single period uh, production problem. We, we wanted to solve this problem using the Excel solver. Okay, so, so I'm going to show you the implementation using Excel. So uh, as I mentioned in, in the previous lecture, it's always good to have a space in which you can define the, the data for the problem. So the idea here, I'm, I'm listing in this uh, table all, all the data uh, that was provided for the problem in terms of, of the time it takes for each uh, product in each one of the stations and also the capacity that we have for, for that station, that production station. Uh, so so we have four stations and we have all these time requirements for each one of the stations. And then we have the capacity for each one of the stations. We also have the information about the demand. We have the information about the unit profit and the unit penalty. So the, important, the, the importance of, of listing these data um, separately from the model is that if you implement the data separately from the model, then you can reuse the model in the future. Like for example, you can, if, if the capacity of one of these stations changes, you can update that, that number here, let's say it's 1500. You can update this number here. You don't have to touch the model and you can um, solve the model with that new information. Whereas if you implement the, 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 these coefficients within the formulas, then if you want to reuse a model, then you will have to edit each one of the formulas uh, individually. So, so I have the, the information data for this problem. And as I mentioned in the previous video, in this problem, we have eight decision variables. So for each decision variable, I need a cell. For the objective function, um, the objective function, obviously I, I already have the solution for the problem here. The objective function is, um, is the summation uh, or, or the difference between the profit and the unit penalty. And, and this formula is related to the decision variables, uh, right? So, so it's, it's What's implemented is, is listed here, 30x1 plus 40x2 plus 20x3 plus 10x4 minus the summation of the unit, unit cost for the inventory. So that's this formula right here. And as you can see, I'm referring to the data in the table when implementing the formula. And the, the constraints, so each one of these values is also coming from from the table. So this uh, 1000 uh, is the capacity listed here. And then this um, it's coming from, from the demand. And the, the implementation itself. So once we have everything set up in terms of the formulas for the constraints and for the space for the decision variables and also the, the information or the formula for the objective function. Um, we go to the solver and we set the objective to be a maximization. The changing variables are decision variables, which are the, all these cells. And the constraints are based on this information. I want to solve the problem using the simplex method. So 
solution doesn't change. So it's right here. We have a profit of $6,425. And these are the, the decision variables in terms of how many units to produce for parka, goose, pants, and gloves. And these are the units that we have to, um, the unit penalty for not satisfying specific demand. Okay, so this is how to implement, or this is an example how you implement a, or an additional example how to implement um, a linear programming model using Excel. The rest of the lecture for today is going to show you how to implement these um, LP problems also using the computer, but using a different um, software. So I, I always like to show the students how to use Excel because Excel is a software that you will easily find in any uh, computer. Um, typically, you will have access to Microsoft Office. So Excel is one of those tools that you, you will have. Um, and, but Excel has some limitations in terms of the size of the problems that you can solve. Um, I think you have up to 200 decision variables. Uh, so if you wanna solve something, a big problem using Excel, then it might not be the best tool. Um, so today I'm going to teach you or show you how to uh, solve LP problems using the computer, but all using a different software that is called Ample. Um, so, algebraic modeling languages, a definition, they are high-level programming languages with which uh, one can specify and solve optimization problems. Uh, properties, these languages do not solve the problem directly, but rather invoke algorithms, solvers, to obtain a solution. And some languages have the advantage of having a syntax similar to the mathematical notation used to describe the optimization problems. So some examples are GAMS, AMPL, IOMO, CMPL, MPL, CPLEX, and, and so on. In this lecture, we're gonna focus on AMPL, E-A-A-M-P-L. AMPL is a mathematical programming language. The user interface is a terminal for input of command lines. It is reached by running uh, the command AMPL Dot e -X -Z -E. Uh, however, there's a, I'm gonna show you, there's a Java a interface that is easier to use, so that's one we're gonna use, uh, but we can act also access the Ample software using the .exe uh, running in the command line. The files contain the model, data, configurations, and other programming structures that can be edited by a regular editor. And there exists a developing interface, which is the one that we are gonna to discuss today, which facilitates the editing and execution of ample commands. So how do we, how can you get access to, to this software? Uh, if you follow this link, you can download the, a trial version for the software for about 30 days. Um, the software is available for both window machines and, and Macs. Um, so here's a, once you, you click on that link, you can download the version for Windows. Just make sure that you download the Ample IDE download for Windows. And also for Macs, make sure that you download the Ample IDE version of the software, which is the one that has the, the interface. So the basic files for Ample, uh, there's three basic files, uh, the .emod, which is used to declare the elements of the models, the variables, objective, constraints, and data, set as parameters. The .dat, which is used to define the data for the model, and the .run, which is where the variable configurations are defined, descriptions construct, such as reading tables and data sets. Obviously, what we're going to show you in this class are basic uh, programming uh, skills for Ample. 
Um, so we're going to focus on the most important uh, instructions. So in terms of syntax uh, variable, VAR is a variable name. The objective can be stated in terms of minimization or maximization. So those words that you see here in red, those are used the uh, our commands for ample. So if you want to minimize or maximize, then you have to write it uh, that way because ample is uh, case sensitive. And then the constraints, you have to state it in terms of subject to. Uh, remarks, every line instruction must be terminated with this uh, dot comma symbol. Uh, line comments are preceded by the symbol, uh, this symbol. Block commands are enclosed by the symbols uh, right here. And ample is case sensitive, as I mentioned already, and variables must be unique. So let's try one example. Uh, in this problem, we have a paint deals produces two colors of paint, blue and black. Blue paint is sold for $10 per liter, while black paint is sold for $15 per liter. Company owns a process plant which can produce one color paint at a time. However, blue paint is produced at a rate of 40 liters per hour, while production rate for black paint is 30, 30 liters per hour. Besides, the marketing department estimates that at most 860 liters of black paint and 1,000 liters of blue paint can be sold in the market. Uh, during a week, the plant can operate for 40 hours and the paint can be stored for the following week. Determine how many liters of each paint should be produced to maximize the week revenue. So here I'm showing you the formulation for this problem. It's a maximization problem uh, in which we have a revenue for selling blue paint and black paint. And then we have a, a limitation in terms of the capacity for our production. So, um, so we know how much we can produce per hour. Um, so besides estimates about 860 liters of black paint and 1000 can be sold in the market and a plant can operate for 40 hours. So using that information, we're setting up that capacity. Um, and so we can produce 40 blue paint per hour, black paint one over 30. And then we have the, the demand capacity for each one of the decision variables, blue paint and black paint. So we want to implement this in Ample. So as I mentioned already, there's uh, three different types of files. Uh, the first file is the .mod file, which is with the one that uh, has the model, implements the model. So you're gonna state here the variables. Uh, you're gonna state the, the objective function and the constraints. So in this problem, we have two variables, blue paint. So we have a declaration of bar variable blue paint and the variable black paint. Um, and then the objective function, we have the command maximize. Uh, we are calling the objective function revenue. So this is a name that you're providing as a user. Uh, we are using um, this to separate this, the declaration from the, from the formula. So it's 10 times the decision variable, blue paint, plus 15 times the decision variable, black paint. And then part three are the constraints. So again, these are comments, the ones that are in green. Uh, so they are not part of the code. Uh, subject to is the first constraint. First constraint is in terms of time. So this is the, again, a name given by the user. So subject to is the instruction from the model, um, from the software, and time is the name of the constraint. So you can put any name here, like if you wanna call it C1, C2, C3 for, for the constraint, that's okay. But if you want to be more specific, then you can state the name of the constraint like this, like time. And then this is the equation, has to be less than or equal to 40. And then the two other constraints are the limitations in terms of the demand. Um, on the next slide, we have the dot RUN. So this is to run the model. Um, so this is a separate file. Uh, we start with resetting the memory. So we, this is the first instruction, reset. 
uh, and then we load the model. The name of the model is example1.mod. So this is the, the name uh, of this file, example1.mod. So we are loading the model and then we are calling this solver, Cplex, to solve the problem. So option, call this solver, solver Cplex, and then solve the problem, solve that, uh, and then show the results. So you're gonna display the, the values for blue paint and black paint, which are the decision variables, and display the revenue. Expand time is showing you the values for the constraint. So let's see how this look in, in Ample. Okay, so when you download the model, um, actually when you, when you download the software, you're gonna have access to a, a folder like this, ampledemswi and 64 so my computer is 64 bits so that's why i downloaded the 64 version um, so when you double click here you will have this information here so there's a lot of information different files um, you will go to this folder the first folder and then you're going to click on this uh, ample lag uh, which is the black cat here when you double click there you will have access to this window okay so let me clear this so and in, in here so the way this works is you, this is the console so it has a, the this is where you're going to type the instructions and on this side you're going to have the the files um, that you are going to create for your models uh, so how do you create a file you go here to this new file and it's gonna ask you for the name of the file and then what type of file it is. So in this case, I can call it sample two. This is .mod. So it's gonna open this uh, window, which is clear. And I already have the instructions. These are the same instructions that are uh, on the slides. So I can type this here so the variables, uh, the equation, and the constraints, and then save it. And this is my first file for the model, example.mod. Uh, and then you can also create a run file. So example two, I'm gonna use the same name. We have to use the same name, um, .run, and it's gonna open a clean window. I have the instructions here, so I'm just copy and pasting here. And these are the instructions for the run file, which are right here. So, so my mod file is this is this is the, the lines of code for my dot mod file, and these are the lines of code for my dot run files. So now I have my two files. And um, so in this file, example two, remember, so if you, if you see this little star next to the name, you have to save it. So in this file, basically the only thing that I have to do to invoke this uh, and to solve the problem is to call this file, example two.run. So I'm going to type that. So it's going to be include Okay, so I'm going to do reset. What's going on? Close it and open it again. Okay. 
I'm going to type reset. And I'm going to call that run file. So I include example to dot R U N. And this is giving you the solution for the problem. Uh, so blue pane, this is the decision variable because um, in the dot R U N file, I'm, I'm asking the model after solving it to display this value. So the revenue and the values for the decision variables. Okay. So in the slides, I have another example. So, so far, I show you how to, so this first example is very simple. We only have two decision variables, so you can state everything and include the parameters. Uh, but typically, you will not, I mean, you will like your model or your the statement for the model or your file for the model to be uh, general in the sense of not having the coefficients for the parameters. We wanted to make it general and then define a separate file with the, with the data for the model. So in this example, that's what we are trying to do. Um, we have a production, a basic production model in algebraic form in which we have the P, which are the set of products, AJ, which is the ton per hour of product J for each J in P, which is the set of products. Then B are the hours available at the mill. CJ is the profit per ton of product J for each product. And UJ is the maximum ton of products J for each J in P. We have the definition of the decision variable. So we have an X for each J. Again, J is a, the set of products. So for each product, we have a decision variable, which is gonna tell us the tons of products J to be made. And then the objective function is stated in general form, which is the summation of the, of the profit per product times the number of products that we are producing. And then it's subject to this, uh, which is one over the tons per hour to be produced for each uh, product. And it has to be less than or equal to the hours available, uh, which is the same problem that we define here. It's the same problem. But now we want to make it general in the sense of we want to be able to, if we have 10 products, we can use the same model. If we have 100 products, we can use the same model. The only thing that we're going to change is the data. So this is the general formulation. Okay, so this is what we have here. And then when you implement this in Ample, this is how it looks like. So we define sets, set P, and then we define for each parameter, how uh, are they listed? So parameter A is in set P. So J in P is, is written in this way. Um, parameter B is just one parameter. Parameter Z is for every J. So that's why you have to include this uh, J in P. Parameter U is also uh, for each J, so you have to define it U for each J in P. And then variable X is also for each J in P. And then we want to maximize the total profit. Uh, so again, total profit is the name that you provide to the, to the objective function. So if you want to name it A or one or two, that's fine. But in this case, we want to maximize total profit is the name that we are providing for the objective function. And we are going to sum for all J's in P, the multiplication of C J times X J, which is what we have here. And then for the constraint in terms of time is the summation, like stated here, the summation for uh, J in P, for all J's in P. And you're gonna multiply by one over AJ times XJ, and that has to be less than or equal to B. And then we have subject to limit. So look at the difference here. So in this case is the summation for all J's in P. In this case, we have a constraint for each J. So we have the limit and we have the set before we define the constraint. So for each J in P, we're gonna have this constraint. So now we have a model defined in general form. 
and then we can reuse this model every time we have a similar problem. The only thing that we're gonna change is the data. So now we're gonna define the data for the problem that we wanna solve. So in this case, we have two products, bands and coils, and we have the parameters for bands and coils and the definition for parameter B. So let me show you how this look in Ample. So I'm gonna close this and just, just clear this up. Okay, so we have the model right here, which is what, what I show you in the instructions. And then we have the data. So set P equals balanced coils, and then for each product we have the definition in terms of the parameters. And then we had the production run, which is the, 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 the file. So we had three files for this problem. This is what is what's gonna call the, this is the instruction that we're gonna make. We're gonna include this production.run, and this is going to call the model is gonna call the data file, and it's gonna call the solver, and then it's gonna solve the problem for you. And it's gonna display the profit. Um, so let's do that. Include prod.run right here. So here we have the, the profit it will solve. This is the profit, and if I want to see the decision variables, I can do display X, and it's gonna tell me how many bands and how many coils, or um, are, are needed to attain this profit. Okay, so this is a brief introduction on how to solve computer, solve LP problems in, in using the computers, using Ample and Excel.